Hello everybody, my name is Loza Katel. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. Last episode, we discussed the first few attempts by Nigerians to organize against the Europeans after colonialism was established. This episode, we're going to continue that discussion by talking about the great tax battle in the East. So sit back and let me tell your story. In 1924, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Morehouse, who was the Lieutenant Governor of Southern Nigeria, designed a scheme of tax that could be imposed on all male natives of adult age in the Southeast via the Warrant Chiefs. Now, keep in mind that people already resented the women's chiefs and those in the southeast weren't used to paying tax at all. Now, this Lieutenant Governor Morehouse guy was proposing that those same chiefs collect tax for the British. However, he didn't have the power to enforce it as Hugh Clifford was the governor and as I previously mentioned in past episode, Hugh Clifford was something of a liberal that was looking out for the natives. So on November 13th of 1925, Graham Thompson became the governor of Nigeria. He was a poor choice for such a valuable colony to be honest. He was inexperienced and had bad judgment. By this time, only Lagos and the Eastern province were still resisting tax. So. Within days of taking office, Thompson announced that taxation would be extended to the East and Lagos. He should have wondered why Hugh Clifford didn't do it previously, but he just didn't care. He should have also suspected something was wrong when all the British residents in the Eastern region followed this directive with immediate requests for more policemen. In 1925, Igbo and Ibibio women of Calabar and Oweri organized demonstrations against paying the tolls introduced by the market ordinance on the grounds that it had not been explained to them and they had not been consulted. In 1926, Thompson decided to go with more house tax scheme that he had already designed and passed it into law. All that remained was to implement it. Court areas would now house native treasuries for collection. The next year, in 1927, the chiefs of Wari were told of the impending tax. Wari was ready for battle. They swore they would never accept it and were openly hostile to even the possibility. Herbert Macaulay of Lagos openly supported them and encouraged them to fight the taxation as he kept fighting it in Lagos. In the end, it didn't happen. We thank God they won, or so they thought. The same year in 1927, suddenly a consensus was happening. Count clerks were seen recording names and asking for unknown names. Anyone that refused was sent to jail. It was obvious that tax was about to happen. In September of the same year, Wari people nominated 57 representatives of the principal towns to respond in writing. So on the 14th of September, the residents of Wari called on the letter writer to write their petition of protest for them. The so-called letter of illiterate was written. It basically stated that they did not and would never agree to the poll tax. They also boycotted European shops and forcefully shut all native shops and prevented any vessels from docking at the cocoa ports, all as a way to protest against the tax. On the 28th of September, this forced the acting governor of Lagos, Frank Morish Badley, to go to worry on the 28th of September of that same year. He summoned a meeting with the leading Istekeri and Irobo chief and elders, telling them it was only fair that they get taxed like the rest of the country. But half of the tax would be sent to the government and the other half would be used to form a native administration which they can then spend the tax however they wish, subject to advice from the residents. The chiefs argued that the people would still refuse to pay it as they weren't used to it. They saw it as unfair and as slavery. Also, the people no longer listened to the chiefs so they couldn't even force them. In addition, they argued that things are already expensive because of import tax and people couldn't cope. It would be better to introduce this new tax three years from now, they suggested. On the 30th of September of the same year, Badeli addressed a large crowd of 1,000 people outside of Sapel native court. The crowd was from Sapel. Is it Sapel or Sapele? I don't even know. The crowd were from Sapel, Okpe, and neighboring towns. He repeated his speech saying that the tax was good for the people and would assist them and that it was going to happen. The Yorubo leader of the Okpe clan by the name of Apo Iva got up and shouted in his language, Liar! 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 Get sticks and kill the white man whilst gesturing frantically and pointing at Badley. The police wrestled him to the ground, 
handcuffed him, stirring up more agitation and anger within the crowd. After his speech, Badeli was escorted to his waiting steamship to return back to Lagos. Apoiva was taken to the police station and word got around that a leader protesting against the tax had been arrested. Roughly 400 people marched down to the station to demand his release. Stupidly, the inspector general of the police ordered his men to fire on the crowd. The protesters scattered and one man was shot in the abdomen and died. Many people were injured. Later that afternoon, the crowd had rallied again and gotten bigger. This time with Osui. Os Osue. Osu. How do you pronounce these names? Ah, is it Osui or Osue? Oh God. Where are my, you know, Eastern people, the Deltas, the Igbos, where they at, yo? <laughs> How do you pronounce that name? O S U E. This time with Osu at the head. He was the leader of the Robo people. The police was also out in full force and they had a stand off until nightfall. For the next few weeks, worried people were incensed. Any chief that agreed with taxation was to be ignored, scorned and fined by the community. Some were even physically attacked and assaulted. Other people were fined by their own Yorubo leaders for collaborating with the tax scheme instead of resisting. Eventually, they just joined their movement. The protests grew all over and the government grew worried. They labelled Osu as the dangerous leader. So, on the 7th of November of 1927, the government hunted and captured Osu. They quickly tried him, convicted him, and sentenced him. Rioting followed his conviction all the way to the end of 1927. The people demanded that the warrant's chiefs be removed immediately as they were agents of oppression and they didn't represent them. At Ugeli, the resistance tried to rescue some of the arrested protesters and it led to one man being gruesomely killed, shot and bayoneted to death. In the end though, the government prevailed. Between 1928 and 1929, taxes were collected from men all over the East. Early on in the year of 1929, compliance with the new tax regime brought a total of £324,690. Payments was higher than predicted and the British government was happy. The decision to tax the East was a good one. Then, the global depression that had been affecting the world hit Nigeria with full force. BAM! And that's where we're going to pause. Thank you very much for paying attention to this episode. Just a recap of what we learned in this episode. In this episode, we learned about the East and their fight against tax. Also, about the agitators in Lagos and their fight against tax. Next episode, we're going to continue this um, story when we talk about the warrior women. Let's go. Love you all. Just got out.